For this lab, you'll need to be able to access the document posted in Google Classroom. Once you have that document, you'll be ready to follow along with me. You might even open one tab where the document is and another tab for this video side by side. We're going to be looking at this food calorimetry quick lab. How much energy is in this chip? The objective for the lab to conduct the calorimetry experiment to analyze the energy content of food. That food being a Pringle crisp. The materials that we're going to be making use of for the lab include our ring stand, our iron ring, a clamp, a temperature probe, graduated cylinder, flask, beaker, electronic scale, wire mesh, lighter, forceps, and a tasty chip. Our procedure of nine steps. I'm going to read through the procedure and then go through the procedure. Step one, add some water, approximately 100 milliliters to the glass beaker. Pour approximately 75 milliliters of the water into the graduated cylinder. Turn on the electronic scale and wait for it to read 0.0, .0 grams. Place the glass flask on the balance and press the zero button. Pour the water from the graduated cylinder into the flask on the balance. Record the mass of the water in the chart. Re-zero the scale if necessary. Place the wire mesh and one Pringle crisp onto the electronic scale and record the combined mass of both into the data table under initial mass, grams, mesh, plus Pringle. Step four, set up the ring stand. With the iron ring resting on the base of the ring stand, the flask securely in the clamp and both securely attached to the ring stand, allow two to three inches of space between the wire mesh and the bottom of the flask. Five, using the temperature probe, measure and record the initial temperature of the water to the nearest 0.1 degrees Celsius. Step six, using the forceps to carefully hold the Pringle, ignite the Pringle in at least four places along the Pringle's edge and place the burning Pringle, Pringle onto the wire mesh under the flask of water. Seven, allow the Pringle crisp to burn. Relight the Pringle crisp if necessary during the burning process until all or nearly all of the Pringle crisp is consumed in the flame. Step eight. Using the temperature probe, stir around the water in the flask and measure and record the highest temperature reached by the water in the flask. After the wire mesh has had a chance to cool off and has stopped producing smoke, measure and record the final mass of the wire mesh and Pringle. Burn. All right, so carrying out these steps will have me obtaining some water Got some water in the beaker here. Now I'm gonna transfer this water until we get approximately 75 milliliters of water. It doesn't have to be perfect or anything. It's not the volume we're gonna be measuring, it's the mass. So we've got about 75 milliliters of water there. We wanna get this, uh, water's mass measured so i'll turn on the balance wait for it to warm up So taking our flask, placing it on our scale, we zero it. Now 
Now we're not interested in the mass of the flask, but only the mass of the water that's currently in our graduated cylinder. So I'm gonna press the zero button again on the electronic scale. And now I'm gonna pour the water from the cylinder into the flask. We're gonna to need to record the mass of the water that's in the flask. My mass currently reads 76.2. So in your Google Doc, you're gonna record there in that data chart, the mass of the water. And that's gonna be again, 76.2 for the mass, just like that. Our next step is getting our ring stand set up together. We have the iron ring already securely on the base of the ring stand. The clamp is securely in place as well. So just a matter of getting the flask into the arms of the clamp and then tightening the clamp up. Perhaps crossing fingers, hoping that it doesn't fall. So our setup is there, we've got a two to three inches or so in between the top of the mesh and the bottom of the flask. Now the next thing we have to do is measure the initial temperature of the water. Currently, the temperature of the air is 24.1 degrees Celsius. We'll take the temperature probe, get that into the water, and then see what's going on with the temperature changed a tiny bit but not very much it looks like we have our initial temperature of water and it looks like it's been sitting at the 24.7 for just a little longer so then recording the initial temperature of the water 24.7 may have missed a step in case I did, I need to address that step right now, and that's the initial mass of the mesh plus the Pringle. So getting the wire mesh on the balance, the Pringle on the wire mesh. Zero the balance first. It's always a good thing. The mass that the balance is showing is 18.3. So this is our initial data set, the mass of the water, the initial mass of the mesh and the Pringle together, and the initial temperature of the water. Now we're ready to light this baby up. So then step six has us igniting our Pringle. I'll use a lighter for that. Quickly now, quickly. Hopefully the open door won't cause that flame to go out too soon. The burning there, we do have a lot of the oils of the chip coming out, sitting on the surface of the um, Pringle Crisp. <sighs> Smells so good, barbecue style. Looks good on the camera. So, good thing I had the door open. Maybe I'll turn on the vent fan. A little post-it pad underneath for the dripping grease. So I just want to go ahead and let that Pringle fully burn. Our next step that we're going to do once the, uh, the burning is stopped, we're going to need to mix around that heated water. 
Not all of the Pringle burned, but a good sufficient amount of it burned. And it's kind of a mess on that wire mesh. Using the temperature probe to stir the water in the flask. And we're looking to um, record the highest temperature reached. Looks like 35.0 is that highest temperature reached. So we need to record that temperature. Thirty-five point zero in that last spot in the data chart. We have one more piece of data to obtain, and that's the final mass of the mesh and the Pringle. Still smoking a little bit. Should be cool enough by now to go ahead and carefully place it on our balance. I re-zeroed that balance, placing that on the electronic balance. The mass shows 17.0. So now we have our data table complete. The next video is gonna have the calculation process within it. I invite you to go to that particular Edpuzzle video Walk through the calculations with me and get this assignment taken care of. Hope you enjoyed that. It's a pretty easy um, type of experiment to do. Of course, we did have some equipment here that made things a bit easier, like the digital thermometer as opposed to a non-digital one, um, the electronic balance, of course, all those things making this lab possible. Thank you.